The UFC was in London. Then they went all the way to Abu Dhabi, and now they are back in Las Vegas, Nevada, before they ship off to Australia. My name is Angelo. This is We Want Picks, and I'm going to give you my bets for UFC Vegas 95. Before we talk about my bets, let me talk about the tools, the insight, the picks, and everything else that we have on our website that can help you be profitable week in and week out. The latest and greatest tool is the data analyzer. This is a tool that we coded from scratch. This is built from scratch with custom code. It has events all the way through September, and you can go to the event, select your fighter, look at every single data point you could ever want or need, and then apply filters to that data. It'll live update a chart that you can export or interact with. Every single dot or the plot points on this chart is the specific fight, and you click on that dot, it will take you to the video so you can actually watch the fight. It is the single greatest research tool available in this space, and it is included in your membership at wewantpicks.com. The membership is $10 a freaking month. That's $2.50 in a week. You're going to get UFC Vegas 95, UFC 305, and two more weeks of events after that. Just go to wewantpicks.com, click become a member at the top to unlock all of this. Another tool that we have for you is the Prop Hunter. This is a curated set of data specifically designed to find prop bets. This has been wildly successful for people using prize picks and underdog, but also people who have sports books that give you significant strike lines, takedown lines, and round line lean. And the last tool that I'll mention before we jump into the actual bets is the line movement tracker. This is going to give you the opening odds, the current odds, the win probability, and the line movement for every fighter on every card this can really help you find your opportunities you can see where the money is coming or going so that you know eh, let me wait the trend is in the right direction or if i don't hop on this now i'm going to lose all of my value all of these tools a million other things we want picks.com click become a member at the top let's talk about ufc vegas 95 i want to show you the bets it's the next slide relax for now i just want to talk in some generalities there's only 10 fights on this card and it does on the surface seem like a favorite heavy card I feel like most of the favorites should win, if not all. We haven't had a favorite clean sweep since I can remember. Last week was close. Only one single underdog won last week. This could look similar, but what I will say is the Apex, for whatever reason, seems to have the biggest underdog wins that we see. More often than not, at the Apex, if there's going to be a big underdog win, it's going to be in that small cage in that little building in Las Vegas, Nevada. If we're talking about some confident favorites, I got Yusuf Zalal. I think Yusuf Zalal is just too smart, too high fight IQ. He's going to hang out on the outside. If he does close the distance, he'll work in some takedowns. I think he can get it done. He is minus 440, but we only have 10 fights to choose from. There's not a ton of value on this card. Even the underdogs, there's not an insane amount of value. Carl Williams is probably closer to some of the best value on the card because he's a guy that has proven to us that he can dictate a wrestling game plan. He can come forward, get the takedowns when he needs them. He's not a finisher. He's not dangerous. He's not a heavyweight that you expect to go out there and take a head off. But what he is, is a guy who can control if this fight stays on the feet or goes to the ground. He's fighting Janata Denise, a really tough striker, a dangerous striker. We just watched Janata get taken down and sort of held down for a little bit against a guy who's not very good. I think Carl Williams can dictate that wrestling pace almost immediately and we're going to get a boring heavyweight fight, but we should get a win, and he's only minus 205. Then we have Charlampos Grigoriou. This is another fight where we've talked about this in the past. Sometimes it's not about the fighter, and it's about their opponent. Charlampos is good. He's not bad at all, but his opponent is horrendous. Horrendous. He's terrible. He gets finished very, very quickly. And yes, he'll bomb, and he'll shoot some takedowns, but I think this is a Grigoriou win all day long. Decent value at minus 252. Frankly, he should absolutely get it done probably by finish. What I will say, if I reverse, the apex is where we get some of these weird underdog wins and all of a sudden his opponent's just bombing away like an idiot and then Gregorio thinks he could take his head off because he was just finishing the first round in the last two fights and he fights a little sloppier than usual. Anything's possible. These are fist fights, but I do trust Gregorio. And then finally, Chris Gutierrez. He has a brand new opponent. He was supposed to fight Javid Bajaret. Javid dropped, and then they said, uh-oh, and they just went out and grabbed the guy. I think he was cleaning dishes in the back of a restaurant, and they said, why don't you come up here? Here you go, buddy. His opponent's actually not bad. He was supposed to fight in a contender series in a couple of weeks, and that's a more fitting spot than against Chris Gutierrez on a main card 
if for an official UFC event. Chris should win, should steamroll. I do have a bet on him. I'll show you that in a second. If we talk about underdogs, there's a few. Now, every single one of these underdogs could lose. And that's what the meaning of underdog is. But I, I actually like a handful of these. Chelsea Chandler, plus 23, 123, full-blown picking her. I think she's just too big. She's enormous. Chelsea Chandler, and I'm not, I'm sorry, Chelsea, if you're watching, I'm sorry. I don't mean it like that. She's big. And she can move forward, hold Yana against the cage, squeak out a takedown or two, and just really bully her way to a win here. Yana's the better, more technical fighter. But Chelsea is big, knows how to use her size, knows how to push forward, knows how to be a bully. She's tough. She's not really a quitter. Only one time did we see her shy away from some danger. That was against Norma Dumont, who's very, very good. So I think Chelsea actually wins this fight, and I think she's a good underdog. Talita Allencar, plus 135. This is a rematch. And if you go back and watch the first fight, fights are three rounds. Talita won the first two rounds. She was going to win the fight. She got a little beat up in the third because she was exhausted. And her opponent took advantage of that. So her opponent had a 10-8 round in the third and then just tied the fight up. But Talita's a decent underdog. The reality is she won two of three rounds. She was going to win that fight. And if she had an old school judge, one of the judges from the mid-2000s that a 10-8 round is only if you almost die, she would have won that fight. So it's not crazy that Talita Alencar, who already won two rounds against her opponent, got her cardio a little bit under control, has a little more success wrestling, and all of a sudden does win this fight. So I think Talita Alencar is a decent underdog, especially if you think she made the improvements. If you don't think she made the improvements, then yeah, this fight's going to be more of the same and hopefully sooner. Then we got Damon Jackson plus 175. I'm a Chepe guy. I love Chepe, Damon's opponent. Chepe's never been a favorite in the UFC. This is his first fight as a favorite in the UFC. And it makes sense on paper. But Damon Jackson is the exact type of guy that can win as a dog. He's a high IQ guy that's just going to come forward and do what he needs to do to win. And in this case, it's wrestle. Chepe wrestled in college. He's got good wrestling. But if Damon just moves forward with the newfound confidence with his hair replacement and gets the takedowns, he could definitely grind out a win. Chepe has been winning in the UFC. But he's been winning like close-ish type fights. His last fight, most people think he lost and that was a gift decision. Fight before that, I think it was Jack Jenkins. Jack like broke his arm in the middle of that fight. Yes, Chepe took him down and he braced wrong so it's not a freak injury. Chepe is the one who initiated that injury by getting the takedown. Before that, he beat one of the least skilled fighters in the UFC. And I'm not trying to dog Chepe. I'm just trying to put those wins in perspective and a guy like Damon Jackson could make it happen. This is a pick where I think Chepe wins the fight. But if we're looking at solid underdogs, I think Damon's a decent dog here. And then Marcin Tybora. The main event's a rematch. Marcin Tybora won the first fight. And this could be more of the same. I get it. It was a few years ago. They're both better. And one of them is 38 years old. But if Marcin Tybora just comes forward, grapple heavy game plan, wrestle heavy game plan early, he can win this fight. He won this fight last time doing that. He can win it again doing that. Now, if you're going to go on the side of youth, somebody pointed out the weight disparance here, the weight discrepancy that in their first fight, Sergei Spivak was much smaller than he is in this last fight. Meaning, over the last four years, Sergei Spivak has added some weight. He's bulked up. He's turned into a full-grown man. And now he's fighting a 38-year-old Marcin Tybora, not a 34-year-old Marcin Tybora. So you do with that what you will. But I think Tybora is a good underdog, especially considering he already won this fight. And it's not like either one of them have gotten remarkably better at any one specific thing. Let's look at the actual bets. Listen, I don't have a lot of action here. And one of my bets had adjusted odds. There's only 10 fights on this card. And I don't like to be overly exposed to any single fighter. So for example, the very first bet you see here, I have the over two and a half on the Santos Chandler fight parlayed with the over two and a half on the Penny Kanzad Carol Hosa fight. I'm not also then going to bet on Chelsea Chandler money line. I'm not also going to go ahead and bet on Carol Rosa or throw in a parlay. I don't want to be overly exposed to any individual fighter. I already have that fight in a bet. I'm going to leave it alone. Because let's say I did, who I think Chelsea Chandler wins. Let's say I said, you know what, plus money dog, let me throw a little bit of money on her. And then all of a sudden, Giannis Santos squeaks out a close decision. Or Giannis Santos finishes Chelsea Chandler. Now I have lost two bets and not one. That's just my approach. When we get to the next slide, those are Jacob's bets. He's got a very different style. 
And if you become a premium member and you unlock all of his bets and all of my bets, you can just work with the style that makes sense for you. I'm far more conservative than Jacob, but Jacob's got the much bigger nights when he's on fire. I got that parlay right off the rip. One unit minus 151. Next bet, I parlayed Carl Williams with Javid Bajrat. Javid obviously dropped off the card. So those odds adjusted. That went from a plus money parlay to a minus 205 money line on Carl Williams. That's just is what it is. I still think Carl wins. I think he's good value. Uh, if I didn't already have this bet, I would probably parlay Carl Williams with Chris Gutierrez. That's probably what I would do. So I think you should do that because you don't already have this bet on the books. But again, I already have technically a money line on Carl Williams because the other half of that parlay dropped. I'm not going to build another bet with Carl Williams in it. I can't be that exposed to a not dangerous heavyweight. Chris Gutierrez wins inside the distance decision, no action. That is expensive, and I put two full units on that. And let me explain that bet to you if you don't know what that means. Essentially, that means if Chris Gutierrez finishes Quang Lee, finishes him, then I get paid out. I got two units on that bet. I will get paid. If this goes to a decision, win or lose, I get a full refund. The bet never happened. We clean our hands of it, and we go home. I do think Chris can finish here. The level of competition for his opponent has shot through the roof. Short notice, Chris Gutierrez is a guy that can finish people. He's got some power. He'll chop those legs down. I think Chris can finish here. I certainly don't see Chris getting finished. The only way you get absolutely screwed on this bet is if the person you bet on gets finished. I don't see that happening. I just do not, and these are fist fights, blah, blah, blah. Not financial advice, all the, all the disclaimers. I just don't see Chris Gutierrez getting finished. So worst case scenario, I get a refund. Best case, I get paid out. And I make myself a little bit of profit here. And then, of course, we have the safety parlay. If you don't know, premium members have access to a parlay. Every single week, I put a parlay on the board. And every single week, that parlay gets stamped as the safety parlay. This week, it's plus money. That's a rarity. It's plus 101 for the safety parlay. That safety parlay hits at a 73% event win rate. 73% of the events that we put the safety parlay on hit. That is an astronomical number in this space. These are fist fights in various size cages all over the world. That is an astronomical number. You can unlock the safety parlay now. Just go to wewantpicks.com, click become a member at the top. If I'm taking a look at Jacob's bets, Jacob, the other half of We Want Picks, his bets are mostly on the website for premium members. He does do an underdog lock of the week every week. This week, his underdog lock was Jafofilio. That fight dropped because this card is a disaster. So what did he do? He went out and he found another plus money bet for you. He feels that the rematch between Talita Alencar and Stephanie Luciano is not going to go the distance. And I don't necessarily disagree, and he got some phenomenal money on that. Either Alan Carr, who's a multiple-time world champion grappler, can get this to the ground and potentially submit, or Stephanie Luciano is just going to continue where that last fight left off Put it on Alan Carr and get it done. Jacob put a half a unit on that. It's almost plus 200 odds. Another bet I'll give you from Jakey Boy is Danny Barlow by KO or TKO. That's at plus 155. Overall, he's got six and a half units on the board. His return, if all goes well, can be 14.37 units. And this is being filmed before all the props have dropped. Last week, he added a whole bunch of bets. And last week, he had a bunch of success here. The only reason I'm showing this is because you guys don't always get to see Jacob's bets. Now, if you watch my recap video, you'll get to see how the night went. You get to see all the bets and all of that. But I want to highlight, because most of Jacob's bets are behind the paywall, I want to highlight the success that he's been having, obviously. Last week, he had 38% ROI on his bets, almost six units of net profit. You can unlock all of his bets all of my bets, the safety parlay, the million tools that I'd open this video with, wewantpicks.com. It's freaking $10 a month. $10 a month. Not 100, not 50, not 20, not per event. $10 a freaking month. And we're in the volume business. We almost have 4,000 premium members because we continue to add tools. We continue to do well in our bets. We continue to offer more than anybody else on this planet could even consider. And finally, let's take a look at bet openly. Bet openly is not a sports book. It is peer-to-peer -peer betting. It is human being to human being. 
So you're going to get better odds because they don't need you to lose. This isn't like when you go bet on DraftKings. If you go bet on DraftKings, they need you to lose. If everybody wins, they don't make any money. So they need people to lose. That's not what Bet Openly is. Bet Openly is just a platform that puts people in touch with each other so they can bet each other. Jacob puts his lock of the week on Bet Openly. And when you take the other side of that bet, you literally take Jacob's money. You're going to get better odds because they don't care who wins or loses. They just take 1% fee on all of the bets. Very simple, very straightforward. You can check them out now at betopenly.com or wewantpicks.com slash betopenly. And here's a closer look at that safety parlay that we mentioned. 12 and 4 in the last 11 pay-per-views. Next week is a pay-per-view. 7 and 2 in the last 9 events. A 73% event win percentage, and a lifetime ROI of 25%. It's an insanely durable bet. It's an insanely long-term successful bet, and you can unlock it right now. We want picks.com. Click become a member. And finally, if you want 50 bucks, we'll send you 50 bucks. We have affiliate deals with most of the sports books. It's a pretty straightforward arrangement. You use the link, you sign up, you make an account, and then they pay us, and I slice off $50 and I give it to you. It's just that simple. We want picks.com slash bets. Use the link, make a deposit. We'll send you 50 bucks as a thank you.